Hello and welcome to a new video here on the Giant Take YouTube channel. I'm Josh and just going to ask you to subscribe and drop a like on this video. What I'm going to be talking about in this video is New York Giants draft big board. Uh, I, this is what my big board is going to look like at picks five or seven, um, you know, kind of at those two picks. I'm going to rank guys one through five, one to who I would really like them to draft at five you know, if they're available, you know, two to five, like, eh, not really. Um, that being said, three guys, I'm going to probably repeat this at the end of the video, but three guys that I don't have that are in like my honorable mentions, Aiden Hutchinson, Trayvon Walker, and Ike McQuanu. I don't have them in my New York Giants big board simply because I just don't think they will be there by five or seven. Aquanu has been mocked repeatedly time and time again at pick number three Hutchinson one and Walker two I don't know why I did in that order but one two three Hutchinson Walker Aquano those guys have been mocked repeatedly at those two positions so I just simply don't think they'll be, be available at five if they are wonderful it's still one of them up right now but um I just don't expect them to be there um at those picks with that being said I don't know what Joe Shane and Brian Dable have in the top of their notebooks, how they have it labeled. So that's why I'm going, this is the prediction. Like this is what the New York Giants draft board looks like. Big board. No, this is mine. This is mine. This is who I want the Giants to pick at five or seven. With that being said, let's get right into it. I don't want to take forever. Starting off with number one, Charles Cross. That's the first guy. He's been the guy that's been most linked with the New York Giants. I know I said it's already my, it's mine, and then I've kind of like, you know, switched it a little bit. I also want to make this somewhat realistic, but do want to add my own values and opinions into it as well. I think Evan Neal is the best out of this out of these top three offensive tackles. Ike McQuanu, Charles Cross, and Evan Neal. I think he's the most solid guy. I'm gonna go out with, you know, I'm gonna say that right now. I think you're not taking a risk by taking Evan Neal. With that being said, Charles Cross, the guy out of Mississippi State, 21 years old, has been linked to the Giants the most um, by reporters, right? It's probably been he, him and, Aqua, and and Neil, excuse me, um, Neil and Cross because Aquan is supposed to be going earlier. Anyway, probably one of the best, if not the best, pure pass protector in this year's NFL draft class. Um, only played at left tackle in college, but... Can, from what it looks like on tape and from what I've been reading uh, by you know NFL and Giants reporters is that he can move to right tackle if necessary, which probably what is what is what the Giant I said is what like four times is what the Giants will ask because they'll have uh, Andrew Thomas playing left tackle and then he'll probably slide in or whoever you would hope the Giants take an offensive tackle in the first round, that guy will slide in uh, and play right tackle for the New York Giants. Now moving on to next up here, that is number two on Josh's big board for the New York Giants, Kayvon Thibodeau. Oregon, 21 years old. He's one of the best prospects in this year's draft class, just overall out of all of the guys there. And it's simply because I think of his athleticism, being able to get to the quarterback as quick as he does, sack him, interrupt the throw, whatever you, you know, or get to the running back, whatever it may be. Kayvon Thibodeau can do it. With that being said, there has been the talk about, oh, he's falling in mock drafts due to the skipping of plays on the field. I have the mindset of when he's in the NFL, that won't be happening because he's in the freaking NFL. I know college is also a big deal too. You're playing Division I football. I get that. But the NFL, I think it's a complete different thing. It's a, a bigger scale up. Kayvon Thibodeau. I think once he gets in the NFL, there you won't have those off the field issues, or I guess on the field issues, because that's where it's mainly coming from. Um, and I think he should be valued there by the New York Giants. With that being said, from Dan Duggan of the Athletic, New York Giants reporter, he said, "Quote: I would be surprised. I guess I would be. It would be. I can't read. It would be a surprise if the Giants draft Thibodeau." because some members of the front office have been turned off by his personality, according to a source. But Shane, Joe Shane, the Giants um, general manager, will make the final call. So it's impossible to say with certainty what he'll do if Thibodeau is available when the Giants are on the clock. That is true. Uh, reports are reports. You, you never know for sure. 
it's it's something to note though that that from what Dan Duggan is reading or hearing um, that the Giants aren't very much into uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. But again, this is my list. That's who I have at number two there. And honestly, as great of a steal that I think um, Aziz Ojolari was last year in the draft class, I think that he's still like a number two guy. He needs that front runner or not front runner. I don't know if that's the right word, but a guy in front of him to to take the heavy heaviness of the load, take the big part of the load, and then he kind of comes um, and he's behind someone. If that makes any sense, I don't know if I'm making sense there, but I just don't think Ojolari is a number one guy um, that can take to be the number one edge from the New York Giants. Okay, without, you know, let's move on from me not making sense. Number three is Evan Neal here. So like I said, I think he's a top guy, um, the top offensive tackle out of the top three there, but simply because Cross has been more linked with the Giants, I have him at three here, and I rather, honestly, the Giants take Thibodeau over Neal, right? I think Cross and Thibodeau is a great pairing at five and seven. I think they could both very much be available. I think Neal, it's got to be Neal across at five because I think Neal will be gone by seven at that point. Um, From Alabama, 21 years old. Again, one of the top offense tackles in this year's draft class. Something to note, he's three inches taller than Charles Cross, which obviously means that he is heavier as well. Six foot eight inches tall, weighs 337 pounds compared to Charles Cross, who was six foot five, 307. So Cross may be a little smaller, also a little lighter, so he's able to move quicker and stay with those defensive uh, tackles or edge rushers. The thing is, with Neil, he's taller, so you might like that more. With you know, he has more uh, wider wingspan, probably. Uh, you know, more space to cover, more place. You know, easier for him to block, maybe easier for him to move because he's taller, but. Also weighs more, so that might bring him down uh, in the speed and being able to keep guys from getting towards the quarterback. So just something to note. But again, I think Neal is the best offensive tackle. I know I keep on saying it, but um, he, he's, there's no risk by taking Neal there. Four, Ahmad Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati, 21 years old. My co-host Alex loves this prospect. Top cornerback in this year's draft class. Could very well be available at the seventh pick. I feel like Gardner is not given enough credit. Maybe it's because of the position that he plays at cornerback and teams just have, you know, there's really good cornerbacks in this draft class behind Gardner in the first, second, third round and more than that. Also teams, um, you know, in that top 10 are covered at cornerback, but he's falling into the later half of the top 10. Giants can snag him up at seven. It would be a really good call. Honestly, we don't know the future of James Bradbury. We assume it's not with the Giants. That leads the next guy. Um, a Dory Jackson up on that list and behind there, you know, it's kind of questionable. Darnay Holmes, you have Aaron Robinson from last year's draft. After that point, it's, yeah, yeah I think you need a, a I would say, um, starting cornerback, nickel, slot, whatever, um, nickel outside. Gardner's the guy for that. And I think he can back up a Dory Jackson, be that second string there, but we'll still be on the field, obviously, because you need more than one cornerback. Um, on each play on defense. According to Pat Leonard, quote, some league sources believe the Giants are high enough on Cincinnati corner Ahmad Sauce Gardner to, or that he is in play at number five overall, which is really big. I honestly see him more as the Giants can snag up at number seven. I think you don't have to worry about him falling, you know, to to the Panthers at six. I don't even think they're looking at Gardner uh, that much unless a team trades into that spot to get him. I think you can pass on him at five, snag him up at seven. That's just my opinion. And remember, he didn't give up a single TD in his college career. Big stuff from Gardner. That's my number four on the big board. And finally, number five. Some of you might question this. You know, it's hard at this point now with me not putting Hutchinson, Walker, or Aquanu on this list. That's number five, Jermaine Johnson II from Florida State, 23 years old. He was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year in 2021. Remember, he only had really one great year of production, which is probably why he's lower on draft boards. But another very, very good edge. And it's very, very big edge class in this year's 2022 NFL draft. Just falls below, I think, just some of the other edges just, just come above him. But that shouldn't stop you from how you judge Jermaine Johnson. This is a very, very good player we're talking about right now. A guy who's definitely going to or I hope is going to go in the top 10. He deserves to go in the top 10. He's been mocked repeatedly to go in the top 10. Not so much to the Giants, but I think another guy, if the draft board 
goes their way could be available at pick number seven for their liking. And now again, I'm just going to mention this. My honorable mentions, technically Aiden Hutchinson, Trayvon Walker, Ike McQuan the reason I didn't have them in my big board at picks five or seven is because I simply just don't think they will be available. I think they'll be gone by then by pick five or pick seven, because I think from these mocks, if I'm, I know draft night, it'll probably be different, but from what I'm seeing, it's Hutchinson one, Walker two, Aquano three. So I just don't think they will fall to the Giants at five from what I'm seeing. Um, and with that, those are my top five. I'll read through one more time. It'll probably be in the description as well, if I remember to put it in there. <laughs> number one, Charles Cross. Number two, Kayvon Thibodeau. Number three, Evan Neal. Number four, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. And number five, Jermaine Johnson. And that is my big board for the New York Giants at picks five or seven. With that, I'm going to ask you to do a few more things. Subscribe. Drop a like on this video if you liked it. Um, let me know in the comments what you think and your big boards are. Uh, for the New York Giants. The draft is this week. It's coming up crazy. Just a few more days. We'll have all the content for you here on the YouTube channel, as well as the Giant Take podcast on all podcast platforms. Again, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Peace.